Hello, 大家好，我是 Rob 可乐。Today I'm going to show you how to feed yourself in an English kitchen. Come on. The kitchen for us Brits is the primary social space in the home. It's where we burn the toast, trigger the smoke alarm, and chatter away with our flatmate slash grandma whilst making endless cups of tea. Here are some features from a typical British home that you might not necessarily find in a traditional Chinese kitchen. Firstly, of course, is the all-essential oven. You can't do without one if you want to bake yourself a cake, make a lasagna, or roast a whole chicken. There are usually two heating elements: one at the top. And one at the bottom. The grill is also right at the top of the oven. You might want to leave the oven door open to avoid burning your meal. Your recipes will usually tell you which settings to use, and it's very common that you'll need to preheat your oven. So just set the temperature to say 200 degrees. Depending on your oven, wait till the little light switch is off, or the screen tells you that it's reached the right temperature. Note that pots and trays you put in the oven will need to be oven safe. When I've had lots of people over for dinner and I just can't muster the energy to wash all those dishes, I can just pop them in the dishwasher, and they'll all come out squeaky clean. There's a little compartment for the cutlery, slots for the dishes, and don't forget to put that little tab in. Of course, you also have pots and pans of various sizes. Depending on the number of ingredients that you'll be cooking with, you can use whichever one you like. Frying pans don't usually come with a lid, so you'll need to buy a sauté pan or a separate lid. And remember not to use hard scrubs on non-stick ones or on stainless steel ones, because that will definitely damage the surface. Even if you're looking to cook every day, there's no need to invest in a whole block of knives. All you'll really need is a chef's knife. This little treasure should satisfy all your chopping needs. And then there's stuff like the peeler, the cheese grater. And the garlic press. These are some other funny little contraptions that you might consider investing in. There's generally also a tea towel in every kitchen. Despite the name, they're actually dedicated to drying the dishes after you've drained them on the dish rack. There's no need to take all of the household appliances and utensils from home, taking up all the precious space in your luggage. Even if your mum insists you do, you can just check some WeChat groups for any second-hand goods, or ask around in your dormitory. It's a really useful way to find the holy trinity of Chinese cooking: cai dao, cao guo, and dian fan bao. Hmm. Time to do some shopping. You don't need to shop every day. People here normally plan ahead and shop for a few days' supplies. The key to shopping wisely is to pre-plan your meals and have a balanced diet. You can either shop in chain supermarkets like Tesco and Sainsbury's, where you'd have no trouble finding essentials like meat, veggies, milk, pasta, seasoning, and sauce, and even rice and soy sauce. Or you can find the nearest Chinese supermarket to find some special sauces and snacks, or some last-minute kitchen utensils if you decide to steam your own balzer. Oh my God! Lonely God, that's my favorite. There are also lots of supermarkets that specialize in different cultures, like African, Caribbean, or Eastern European, where you can try snacks and spices from all over the world. Of course, people are mostly used to food from their own countries, but not giving something new a chance is how you miss out on all the good stuff. For cheap, fresh veggies, farmers markets are the way to go. They're kind of like Thai Shi Chang in China, but you'll find it a bit harder to haggle because they're already pretty cheap. Hi,、right, can I get a bunch of spring onions, please? Thank you. Here you go, chef. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, now we need to put all of our shopping in the right place. You can store dry foods like noodles, rice, and pasta, and other foods that won't spoil easily in the overhead cabinet. Cans, all sorts of oil and Chinese sauces, and ganghuo, tea bags, coffee, sugar, crisps, and other snacks also go in here. Dishes and pots are usually stored in the lower cupboards to keep them easily accessible. When you're storing things in the fridge. Try to make sure that you put meat and veggies separately, and line the vegetable container with paper towels so that they stay fresh for longer. And always set cooked and raw meat apart so that you don't get food poisoning from invisible bacteria. If you only have one compartment, then at least make sure that you have sealed containers to store them each separately. Check the best before date on the packaging. Milk and meat tend to have quite a short shelf life, so use them as soon as possible. And note that the best before date may not be exactly the same as how long you can store it once opened. Put any meat and vegetables that you're not planning to use within three days in the freezer, and they'll normally last for about a month. 
freezing your leftover food is also a great way to reduce food waste. Now, onto the real deal. You've got your ingredients, you've got your tools, but what are you gonna cook? Well, online recipes are here to help. Websites like BBC Food, Tasty, Xia Chu Fang are all great sources of inspiration. There are also some brilliant tutorials on YouTube, which is more visual and direct if you prefer to be dazzled by someone's amazing cooking skills. If you haven't really cooked before, take baby steps and start with the basics. Don't expect to master Gordon Ramsay's Beef Wellington from day one. As long as you don't burn the house down, you'll get there as soon as your inner Chu Shen comes to you. It's the end of the semester. You've not slept in three days. You've got four deadlines all due this week. It's cold outside, you're hungry. What are your options except for ordering your fourth Domino's meal of the week when you've literally tried everything on the menu? Your first option is to do some meal prep. Cook enough food for a few days and then pack them into meal portions. Freeze them in the freezer. You can take out the packs and reheat them as you go. Or you can just get a ready meal from a supermarket Stab some holes in the plastic, shove it in the microwave, and you're ready to go. If worse comes to worst and the snowstorm stops all the pretty delivery boys coming to your door, you can always rely on some good old instant noodles. Well, that's all from me for today. Don't forget to do your dishes, give us a like and a subscribe, and let us know of any useful kitchen tips that you know of in the comments below. See you later.